Dear everyone, Assalamu alaikum. I hope you still have some energy left. It's been a long day. You've been listening keenly on the fantastic speakers that have been here before me. I'm going to talk about tech leadership. And um, I'm going to start off with um, a time period in our humanity with, which was particularly devastating. Over a century ago, as World War I was ravaging Europe, millions of deaths, there was an incredible tech race going on. And one of the people that were involved in that tech race was a renowned scientist from the imperial Germany called Fritz Haber. And his name is synonymous with the paradoxes of tech advances. Fritz Haber, in his quest to scientific discovery, discovered and concocted a chemical called chlorine gas. It's a weapon that has a devastating impact. It goes into your lung and makes you feel like you're drowning on dry air, in dry land. Imagine that, drowning, feeling of drowning. And it was so wild that it was banned in battlefield use. All countries agreed that this is a weapon of too big of an impact. However, Fritz Haber is also the guy behind the world-known Haber process, a method to produce synthetic ammonia using nitrogen from air, which some of you may know is used to produce fertilizer to boost agricultural yields. If the Haber process wasn't invented, we could not have sustained the 8 billion population that we have today. And this is the paradox, the dichotomy of tech advancement. It's a double-edged sword capable of both tremendous benefits and incalculable harm. And we've seen this again and again over the past decades. Ground-breaking discoveries that are ushering immense prosperity for humanity, but at the same time also causing mayhem. Nuclear fission, offering clean energy, but also humanity-ending weapons. GPS and satellites, navigating our daily commutes, making our life easier, but at the same time also navigating deadly missiles. Social media, connecting the world that the way that we thought it was impossible just a couple of decades ago. However, it is also fueling the atrocities like the Rohingya genocide and radicalizing communities. Autonomous machines and AI, it is helping us be more efficient. It is helping you code and maybe doing your homework, but at the same time, it is also the potential to create a source of an avalanche of misinformation and disrupting societies. And least but not least, I mean, blockchain and, and cryptocurrencies, which you've heard so much about, heralding a financial innovation, security, privacy, tokenization, all that that is awesome, but also enabling an industrial scale of money laundering and illicit financial transactions among criminal cartels that we haven't seen before. So as you're here today, um, you know, you attended Future Fest because you are either an aspiring or already you know, tech leaders and, and innovators, we need to recognize the immense power that our innovations hold for our societies and that can change both our societies but also global dynamics. And does that mean that we need to be careful, we need to regard ourselves or censor ourselves? Absolutely not. What it means is that we need to have creators and founders that are aware of the full potential of their innovations, how it is impacting both in the good way and in the bad way. And only then we're able to maximize the benefits for our societies. Because most people here, I am assuming, is also doing this because they believe in a, or you believe in a bigger good. And let me give you one very particular example of this. Every tech innovation that is used in a bad way or by a bad actor inflicts a societal cost on the society. 
it is a cost. You can feel it in one way or another. And, and this one example is also the reason why I moved from being a doctor, politician, to end up becoming a tech entrepreneur. It is about access to financial services. And most of you know, access to financial services is absolutely crucial for socioeconomic development. Having a strong SME businesses that have access to financial services is crucial for economic growth. And it should be on the top of every decision maker's agenda. And it is, right? However, still, there are hundreds of millions of people and hundreds of thousands of businesses, potentially even millions, that do not have access to financial, modern financial services. Even with the advent of fintech, we had a fintech panel here earlier today talking about how fintech is revolutionizing. And do you know one of the biggest barriers for this? It is bad people using the same tech for bad stuff, money laundering, financial fraud, etc. And when that happens, government regulators and decision makers, rightly so, will need to impose regulations. And these regulations is the cost. And that cost is paid by the entire society. So this dilemma intrigued me so much that I didn't only invest in a startup, I actually ended up uh, uh, working on comp compliance issues. I made it my mission to leverage technology to make sure that the unintended consequence of technological innovation wasn't a barrier. So I w established a startup that worked on easy, uh, uh, simplifying uh, the burdensome process around compliance, money laundering compliance, KYC compliance, and counter finance terrorism uh, finance uh, compliance. And at the same time, making sure that the fintechs can do what they were intended to do. And I call the company Easy Comply. So through my journey as an entrepreneur, I learned that tech leadership demands a profound commitment to build trust. Because what happens when bad people use the same tech that you guys innovate is that we erode trust. In my home country of Norway, I'm a Norwegian Pakistani, I'm born and raised in, in, in Norway, the trust between and within the public, the government and the private sector is incredibly high. That is one of the reasons why that country is such a great place to live. And most places in the world does not have that level of trust between the public, the government and the private sector. And as I mentioned, every time an act, bad actor uses tech in a bad way, it erodes the trust. Hence why we also need innovations to make sure that we stop the bad actors using our tech. So I'm saying all this because I know that many of you are in the process of establishing your own companies or already working in companies. Having a purpose with what you do you're able to do a lot more and also able to attract a lot more talent. My focus currently is on tackling financial crime and money laundering, which cost not only you know, the Pakistani economy, but the global economy trillions of dollars. But there are an ocean of these problems. For instance, who's gonna work on making sure that the revolution that we're seeing in artificial intelligence or a artificial gen general in intelligence doesn't end up causing more harm than it does good. Who's gonna do that? That also requires innovation, and those are the types of challenges that you have to help solve. So I will end my talk with one challenge, uh, or actually multiple challenge uh, to you, and ask you some questions that I hope you can reflect and think a little bit about. So the company that you work with, or the innovation, or the startup that you plan to start, or, want, or have already started, is it alleviating a burden in society, or is it creating new ones that needs to be alleviated? Always think about that, right? Secondly, are you able to build, are you able to facilitate and help build trust in society with what you're creating or where you're working? Because that's also incredibly important. And this leads me to my win lesson 
And it's a little bit more than 15 words, I'm sorry, Jimmy, but a true tech leader, tech leadership means that you are able to have a principle, a guiding principle, that your innovation not only advances human ability, not only makes our societies better, but also deepens societal trust. Thank you so much.